Welcome to another edition of the Coach Ken Erickson Show. Along with the coach, I'm Jim Locke. We are deep into softball season and the Bulls are on a roll. We've got a couple of great wins to talk about today, show you some highlights and also something very special from a few days ago that happened right here on the field after a Bulls win. Coach, you got this team rolling a little bit now. We're going to talk about wins over Central Michigan and Detroit on this show. In general terms, are you pleased with the progress of this team? Team. We all know about the schedule at the beginning of the year, how tough it was, but it seemed to be beneficial for the Bulls. Well, you know, we're, we're putting W's on the board right now, and if you ask a coach, are they ever happy? If they answer yes, they're, they're lying to you, you know, and, and at the same time, you got to step back and take a look, as you alluded to, the progress we've made since the beginning of the year when we're trying to find our identity. And, and I think right now, if you, <laughs> we've won 10 out of the last 12 ball games, uh, we, we got something good going. We're playing well. You know, we played a couple of games which I thought were flawless, you know, which is amazing, you know, for a college team to play flawless uh, uh, through a season at least a couple times. And we're still looking for the flawless practice right now. But um, by and large, the last two nights, I thought we did a, did a nice job of maintaining some composure against a very good Central Michigan pitcher coming back and answering with three runs after they scored two uh, in, in the top of the third inning. And then uh, the Detroit game, I thought we came out firing on all cylinders in the first inning, which made it a lot easier for the team to have a lead in the first inning for the first time in a long time. Central Michigan game turned out to be a nail biter and it was a three run pinch home run by Monica Santos. We should stop after four years being surprised about Monica Santos hitting home runs. Yeah, you know, I everybody in the world always comes up to me and says, man, who is that little girl? And I said, well, if you went by the size of the heart, then don't use the word little ever. And uh, she's just a ball player, you know, she's one of those kids that comes to play every single day, loves the game. She was like that when she was six, seven years old, and um, she's got a knack uh, for the moment. You know, you think about a few years back in the, the finals of the, the Big East tournament here, you know, who got a big hit, you know, and uh, you, you take a look back at some other conference games and big games and who got a big hit, you know, and it was always uh, number 13 in the middle of all of it, you know. So it's, it's nice to see that she comes uh, out here to play with passion. She always has, and uh, it benefited us against Central Michigan, that's for sure. The home run gave the Bulls lead, then the bullpen made it stand up. This was a great relief appearance by Erica Nunn. Since Kansas, um, Erica has uh, begun to pitch really, really well, you know, and, and we can tell that by statistical analysis by, you know, where are you? You're getting ahead in the count, that's great, but can you get that out pitch? And that's a big deal, and Erica has found now uh, the confidence to go after the hitters in all kind of count situations and I think that's part of maturity. It's a big difference when you're 18 years old and now if you're 22 that you can find things and you're, and you're confident and it's helping us out. So the Bulls wrap up a win right back on the field the next day, March 7th against Detroit. Five in the bottom of the first for the Bulls and Susan Wysocki just in total command in the circle. Yeah, you know, she, um, <laughs> Susan, uh, Walks the first batter of the game. So the, the old man gets a little bit up on the you know, blood pressure's going, and here you go. You have an opportunity. He's been throwing well in relief and going to give you a great job now to come in and get a start and show us what you got. And goes 3 0 on the first batter. And so took a timeout, walked out there, you know, looked her in the eye. And when you look at Susie, you got to look like this. She's pretty tall. And you looked her right in the eye, and I said, okay, now is the time to show me what you have. You know, and she came back and she battled on the next two pitches. I was really happy to see some fire in the belly. And, uh, and then after she walked that young lady and that kid was a good battle, she got the next three people out. And, uh, and after that, it was cruise control. So she felt better, her feet were on the ground a little bit. And, uh, but, but knocking a couple on the board in the first inning and Mia Fung's home run was a big deal. Uh, got Susan to relax a little bit. You know, she's been doing very well in relief, but for her to go as a starter, get a complete game shutout, uh, I think only bodes very, very well for the future for us, for our pitching staff. Fung's fourth home run of the year, also in that game, a home run for Julie Weber. Had the tremendous defensive play, jumping over the fence a few games ago and hitting very well in the leadoff spot, although you didn't have her in the leadoff spot in that game. No, we, we changed the lineup around a little bit. We've, we've got some people I think we've moved around, uh, whether through statistical analysis or feel of what's going on, to try to create a few more runs early in a ball game. And, you know, we, we talked to our team about it yesterday and all of a sudden it pays off, and so we look good. You know, if, if we don't score runs, we'll just look like idiots, you know, and so, you know, we're only as good as, as our kids can execute, that's for sure. You know, it's, it's not so much about the X's and O's, it is about the Jim's and the Joe's, and, and yesterday our kids executed really well and they played well, so 
uh, it, it made uh, it made the coaching staff look very very good. Bulls get a run rule victory, eight to nothing in five innings over Detroit, getting their streak up to ten wins in twelve games. We will preview the Bulls and a very good USC Upstate team later on in the show. When we come back, we will follow Leanne Spivey, the Bulls' senior catcher. We'll go to practice with her. She'll be wearing the GoPro, and we'll get a bird's eye view of exactly what goes on on a USF softball practice. That's when the coach Ken Erickson show continues. The University of South Florida is a regional powerhouse with global significance, leading advances that are changing the world. Now a leader among the nation's universities in research, healthcare, and just being cool. The place where young men and women train to become the best. This is where the bulls run. Looking for an individual or family health care plan, or maybe a dental policy? Look no further than the Tampa Florida Blue Centers in West Shore, Carrollwood, and Pinellas Park. For more information, go to floridablue.com or call the number on the screen. Settling under it and right makes the catch. Good, strong throw to the plate. Payoff pitch, swung on, blasted deep into right, carrying at the wall, and this one clears the fence! There you go, Bulls! Hi, hey, girl, Ed. This is cool that they're going to get this view. Coach Jess, this is your good side. Hey, right here. There you go. That moving part, right? Moving part. There we go. Very easy to continue. Moving. If you're stagnant, you gotta start again. It's tough. To be a shortstop behind the plate. Okay. Hey, stick with it right here. There you go. You guys are doing a great job of moving your feet. You know, you guys are doing a good job. There you go. Keep going. Way to go with it. Trying to get some rhythm and timing from our blocking. There you go. This game is a little slippery. Keep your head on it. You kept it in front. <laughs> nice. You didn't spaz. That was good. You just took it. All day, go to our right, two to our left. In gear. Don't see this every day. Ball, ball. This is where the legends live, waiting for someone with better innovation. From the brand that reinvented the t-shirt comes the Under Armour Speed Form Apollo. This is our rocket ship. What am I doing in this royal carriage? I summoned it with YP, the best local app ever, with Uber built right in. Conroy, take me to the haberdashery. That's not my name, sir. <laughs> sir. How do I get away with this? I bought tickets directly from the YP app, and with Fandango built right in, I go right to my primo seats with this obscene bucket of corn. Hot. <laughs> Download the YP app. Do it now. 
A great look at practice and Leanne Spivey, who was a great senior leader on this team. With, with, a, with a tremendous dry sense of humor um, and, and a kid's attitude of how to play the game, you know, since she's been here, she's never lost that. So I'm sure that you get a lot of bounce around look at what she's doing out there, but she is, she's phenomenal. She's so steady. You know, we put her in any crucial situation. Uh, she gets in any situation as a catcher, as a hitter, and she's just so steady and, and nothing phases her, nothing bothers her. And boy, you just wish everybody could have that type of demeanor. Well, we've got some great softball coming up this weekend. Again, a very busy schedule here on campus, starting off with a Friday game against USC Upstate. They're going to have some games before they play the Bulls on Friday, but they are 17-2 and two at the moment. This is a pretty good team. That's why they're on our schedule. You know, you take a look at the teams that we put on the schedule, Wisconsin, Purdue, Florida, Auburn, Tennessee, you know, USC Upstate, a perennial top you know, 25 team and, and then and New Mexico State after that. And I don't even know what great teams are on the weekend, but you know, we're just going out to try to play ball and how we play ball and take a look across the diamond. And there's some other girls in some other uniforms and we really don't play the name game. We just know that every game is going to be a war that day, you know, in respect of the battle itself. And uh, it's going to be, it might come down to one pitch. It might come down to one play. And, and the team that plays the most flawless has the best opportunity to win. So. Obviously, if the fans come out, they're going to see some pretty good softball here at the stadium on Friday. Is this Bulls team where you want them to be at this point? You know, that's a that's a great question. You know, I'm you got such a young lineup in respect of if you play ten players on the field, including the designated player. You know, I, I think maybe we have four. You know, maybe three upper class people. The rest of them are sophomores and and freshmen. So uh, I'm happy with the learning curve right now. Um, I think that they're holding their own very well with every team that they're playing against. You know, the scoreboard is going to take care of itself if we do what we're supposed to do. Um, so I'm not answering your question directly, but I think if I had to, I would say I'm, I'm happy where we're at. Um, I'm not thrilled to death of where we're at, you know, in respect of where I know we're going to go. But we play our season long because seven innings is not a good sample size to show you how good a team can be. It has to be over a period of time. Uh, because the game is so tough, it's a game of failure. So how do we respond on the first at bat if it doesn't go well? How do we respond on a day that maybe we're not that good? You know, and do we come back the next day? So as a young group, you know, you don't know what you're going to get till the next day. But so far, so good. How do you analyze the pitching so far? Erica Nunn making some strides. You know, Cheyenne Eggins mm -hmm. coming in at this level on a freshman has mm -hmm. been terrific. But there have been some ups and downs on the staff. If if we could take the last. 10 games on how the pitchers have approached the hitters and put it into the first nine games of how the pitchers approach the hitters. Um, I think you would see a, a difference in the, the initial start of being two and seven. You know, I think you'd see a difference in that. And at the same time, remember, we have a, a brand new coaching staff with new philosophies. And so for Jess Moore uh, working with the pitchers, it's starting to sink in with Tommy Santiago working with the infielders and the mental side of the hitting, it's starting to sink in. Um, our outfield play has been A plus, as you've seen. It's, it's not just Julie Weber making defensive plays. It's Kenya uh, Yancey, it's, it's Mia Fung, it's Aston Donovan, you know, it's, it's all those people making plays. So we're throwing the leather around very, very well, infield and outfield. Uh, but the game, the mental approach of how to play the game, what to look for, um, is a hundred times better than it was in the first nine games. That's what gets me excited. Where are we going to go next week? You know, it makes me more excited to think that we can get better because we can. Um, it's just of when we're going to do it. All right, Coach, thanks. Good luck this weekend. All the schedule of games on GoUSFBulls.com. Before we leave you for this show, we do want to go back to an event that took place <laughs> just over our shoulders on the 26th of March, right after the Bulls beat UNLV. It's Leanne Spivey again in a much different situation here. <laughs> Getting proposed to, was that a first as a head coach? I, I was uh, more nervous in the preparation of that at 10 o'clock that morning than I was for both the games that we played that day. And um, uh, <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, it was a first and it was special. And um, for somebody as special as, as Leanne and Nick, who's a great guy, Nick calls me up on the phone and he says, coach, I want to ask you if I could marry your catcher. My, my first response was, 
uh, well, did you talk to her parents first? And you know, when he said yes, I said, well, I, Nick, you're a great guy, and, and yeah. And then his next response was, do you think it would affect her the next day? Because we played two games on Saturday. I said, knowing your future wife, ain't nothing gonna bother her at all. So go get it. And uh, right after she got engaged, and that day, you know, she was three for three right, right before that yeah. game, which was, we're sitting there, and she hits a home run, her last at bat before she gets engaged. You couldn't have scripted it any better. Well, I think she was like, what, eight for 12 after she got engaged? So anybody out there that wants to get engaged with any of our players, please come to me, especially down the stretch when we're looking for the NCAA tournament. We need some hot hitters. We'll post the phone number for you. Coach, thanks. Have a great weekend. We'll Thank see you, you next time. All right. Head coach Ken Erickson, thanks for joining us on GoUSFBulls.com.